Yes. We are talking about using a gas forge for heat treating. Speaking of gas forges for heat treating, I would not recommend any serious maker if you want to sell your work to heat treat out of a gas forge. My name is Tobias Hangler. I am an Austrian bladesmith and trained metallurgist. I've been making and using culinary knives for about 14 years ago I started and I've been a full-time knife maker, bladesmith for about two and a half, three years now. Usually you only use a gas forge for heat treating because you already have a gas forge from forging and now you want to heat treat it in it as well because kilns can be expensive. What are the pros and advantages? What are the characteristics of using a gas forge for heat treating? First of all, we'll talk again about precision. The precision is unfortunately pretty bad with a gas forge. Some steels are more forgiving with temperature precision, others aren't. So if you use super low alloy steels that want to be heat treated in a certain range, you will easily have problems. The second point that we talk about when we're talking about heat treating systems basically is homogeneity. We want basically the entire at least the edge of the knife at the same temperature. Often we don't care about the back or we basically intentionally leave the back and the spine of the knife softer, don't heat it up at all. But all along the edge, we want to have an homogeneous temperature. That is something that is very tricky with a gas forge. You can, usually you will have the problem that the tip overheats. You can try to compensate, you know, put the spine of the knife along here in the entrance, heat up the whole body of the knife and only then put it in. But the thinner the parts uh, of the knife, the, the faster they're gonna heat up and that's hard to avoid. And you can't really regulate the burners to 830 degrees. They just don't work that way. They don't, like the, the combustion temperature is higher. So what you can do is, you can put in a large tube, for example, heat up the tube, put the knife in there. But the homogene homo homogeneity uh, is always gonna be mediocre to bad, if we're being honest. Safety and emissions of a gas forge. While I would consider a gas forge rather safe to use if you have proper ventilation and all that, you will always have the emissions. So you have CO2, uh, possibly carbon monoxide if you have a reducing flame and you will have fine dust particles so you will need very good ventilation you need to be very safe when you work with gas so don't work in your basement even if it's cold in the winter do open a window have something some airstream i have co2 uh, and carbon monoxide detectors everywhere in my forge because i've had plenty of uh, carbon monoxide poisonings in the past that i didn't realize were carbon monoxide poisonings it's like you go home you're tired have a headache maybe get a small fever very possible that you had carbon monoxide poisoning. Just because it's cold, you turn on the forge, it's nice there. And in the winter, you maybe keep all the doors closed of your shed or just open them a little bit. That can easily be too little. Next up, efficiency. When you use a gas forge for heat treating, I would say the, the efficiency itself in terms of the, of the system that we're using is very low. Why? Basically you put in the, the propane or butane or whatever, mix it with air and it combusts. We create energy, we create thermal energy. We don't create energy, <laughs> but we transfer it into heat. That heat is basically now moving around in the gas forge, heating up the knife. It also heats up the walls. We have a little bit of convection and we have a little bit of radiation that basically heats up the knife. And the gas stream still exits at six, seven, eight hundred degrees and basically heats the room now. So all the energy that is coming out of the off gas is basically lost for forging. So if you compare this to electric kiln where you have only the conductive heat loss, basically the, the heat that you get on the outside of the casing, that's the only heat that gets lost. There's no off gas. But in the gas forge, you're constantly pumping in air and constantly pumping out air. And that's a lot of energy that's not really used unless you're heating your workshop with it, then it's okay. <laughs> Efficiency is quite bad, if we're being honest. Another important aspect of any heat treating system is cost. And that's probably where the gas forge shines. These days you can get pretty cheap gas forges. Again, they are not great for heat treating. I wouldn't recommend to buy one just for heat treating. If you already have one to forge, that's probably the most likely reason why you would heat treat out of a, out of a gas forge is just the cost because yes it is very low and it's easy to operate and to set up on the cost side we're pretty happy with the gas forge if we talk about heat up time now i'm talking about 
the gas forge itself. How long does it take to heat up in comparison to a kiln? Gas forge is pretty good on the heat up. It's not nowhere near <laughs> as fast as an induction heater, but it will be faster than an electric kiln just by how much energy you can pump in with propane, with the gas. So we're talking typically about, I would say, eight to 15 minutes to get to a good even temperature in the gas forge. It will depend a lot on the model itself, of course. And lastly, we're talking about the heating rate of the knife itself. As we want to reach a certain temperature and not just any temperature, we need to regulate the burners down by as much as we can, even maybe put in a piece of metal in between or like a tubing so that we eliminate most of the convection because we said the gas burner itself is hotter than we want it to be. So in order to reach a homogeneous-ish temperature, we need to basically trim back the burners as much as we can. And that results actually in rather low to medium heating rates for heat treating knives in the gas forge. So basically, gas forge is not very good for heat treating. No, they are not. <laughs> so basically, basically they suck. <laughs> you only use them because you have nothing else. Speaking of gas forges for heat treating, I would not recommend any serious maker if you want to sell your work to heat treat out of a gas forge. My personal opinion, I would say the same about coal forges. There's just no way of really telling other than your eyesight if the knife is very good. So it can overheat easily, you can do hardness testing afterwards, but you're never gonna know what the grain size is. So I'm not a fan.